Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I am super excited because I finally got my hands on the new JSOX clear rear shell for the Steam Deck. Now this is something I've been waiting on for a little while and uh, overall it's not just a clear shell for the Steam Deck. There's actually some functionality here. They do include some options when it comes to the rear buttons so we can customize those. And this has a metal plate built in with a thermal conductive pad to extract some heat from the Steam Deck CPU. Now you might notice that the rear here does have my name on it, and I wasn't aware that they were doing this with some of the first pre-orders, but this was sent over for review from Jay Sox. I'm not being paid to make this video, and all of the opinions are my own. I actually pre-ordered one, but they sent this one over for review since uh, in the past I've picked up a few of their products on Amazon and featured them on the channel for the Steam Deck, but I do think this looks really good. Now these are going for $30 on their website, I'll leave a link in the description in case you're interested, but inside of the box we're going to get everything we need to get this installed on our Steam Deck. We've got a screwdriver, a spudger, we've also got all the screws we need to reinstall this, and they include three different styles for those rear buttons, so we can do a little bit of customization here. And they are color coded out of the box, blue is going to be low, red is going to be high, and yellow is going to give us that stock feel of the Steam Deck. I think I'm going to go with the high ones, I was really interested to see how it looks and feels. I thought this was pretty cool that they do give us a little bit of customization here. And it's really easy to mount them up. Obviously, they're going to go in the stock location, but we do have these studs here, and we're going to put these right in with screws. Originally, I thought these kind of just sat in the back. I didn't want them wobbling around, but we can mount them here nice and neat so they're not going to go anywhere when everything's reassembled. When it comes to the build quality, it looks really good. I don't notice any kind of blemishes or anything like that. So yeah, I mean, for being the first transparent back on the market, I think they've done a great job. Now one thing I'd love to see down the road are maybe some color options, and that could be something they do, or maybe another company. I'm personally waiting on a company to come out with a full atomic purple shell for the Steam Deck, and for sure I'll definitely be swapping one of mine out with that shell. But for now, I think this is pretty awesome. Another thing this shell has going for it is this aluminum cooling plate that they have mounted here. It's got a thermally conductive pad on it, and this is actually going to make contact with the CPU heat shield in the Steam Deck, therefore extracting a little bit of heat out of the unit. And we'll definitely be doing some thermal testing by the end of the video. I'm actually really interested in this for modifications down the road. Now getting this installed is actually super easy. They've got a full video over on their website if you want to check that out. But I'm just going to go over it real quick. First thing we need to do is remove the eight screws on the back of the Steam Deck to get that shell off. And it does come with a screwdriver and a spudger. We're going to kind of get the clips from the top. This is how I do it. Kind of just pop it off. It does come off pretty easy once those clips are detached. And we'll take a look at the stock rear shell. Nothing too fancy here. We've got our ventilation. We've also got those rear buttons that are just kind of clipped in here. And there's actually no extra like thermal conductivity on the rear here. And I completely understand they didn't want the back getting super hot to burn somebody. And that's one thing I'm kind of worried about with the JS Ox rear shell. But we will do some testing once we get it installed. But it's going to make contact with this heat shield here for that CPU. We've got our fan and our battery. Nothing too special, a lot of you have probably seen this before. You can go to iFixit to see every screw you need to take out of this thing to get it completely disassembled. But yeah, I think they did a great job designing this rear shell. Now the first thing we need to worry about here are the rear buttons. I think I'm going to go with the red ones, which are the high ones, but you could experiment with this. You could go with the low, or if you wanted to go back to stock, it should be pretty easy to kind of test them out at first before we fully assemble the unit. Because getting them in here is quite easy, and there is a little ridge that this needs to go underneath. If you leave it on top, you're going to have a gap in the Steam Deck's rear shell. You want to make sure that's kind of slid right underneath there. And uh, once this is kind of uh, mounted down, we've just got a little bit of play to push that rear button. But I'm going to go ahead and get all four of these in. Comes with all the screws we need to mount this down with. And once we have that finished up, the last thing we need to do is kind of reassemble the unit. And remember, we've got that aluminum plate with the thermal pad on the clear shell. Make sure you remove the uh, protective film on that thermal pad. And once the rear shell is in place, it's going to make contact with that CPU slash mainboard heat shield. And uh, hopefully, we can get a little more heat out of this unit. Once it's lined up, I'm just going to snap it right back into place. And before I put the rear screws in, I just want to make sure that my rear buttons are working properly. And I like the feel of them. This way I could easily disassemble it and put the uh, lower ones or even the normal ones back in. But so far I do think it looks pretty good. They feel great and yeah, I mean, they're working just fine. So I'm going to leave it like this for now. I can always swap it out later on. 
So I could use the screws that came out of the unit, but uh, they do include extra screws for everything here. So this is actually a big plus. I'm glad they have these. I actually have another Steam Deck that I lost two screws in the rear so I can use the ones that I took out for that. But yeah, I mean, I do think this looks great. I'm glad it's not a crystal clear shell. I don't think it would have matched up really well with the Steam Deck being crystal clear, but having this kind of smoke does look really awesome. So I'm done with it. I can go ahead and use this, have a great time with the Steam Deck, but I did want to test out those thermals now that we have that conductive pad along with that aluminum plate in the back of the unit. So the first thing I did was just kind of get a baseline on the stock Steam Deck without disassembling the rear. I've got Spider-Man Miles Morales running right now. We're about 10 minutes into this test here. 81 to 82 degrees on the GPU, 83 to 84 degrees on the CPU. This is about as far as we can push the Steam Deck. Total system power consumption right now, including everything on the deck, is around 26 to 27 watts. That's kind of maxed out right there with the deck. Now moving over to the new transparent shell, to my surprise, we actually dropped GPU and CPU temps significantly in this 10 minute test. We're now at 78 degrees Celsius on the GPU and 79 degrees Celsius on the CPU. Remember with that stock rear, 83 on the GPU, 84 on the CPU. So yeah, with this 10 minute test, we did get a significant drop on the temps here, but I'll tell you, if I ran this for another 10 minutes, we would more than likely get really close to those temperatures we had with the stock shell because we don't have any extra active cooling going on here. Basically, we've just got a little more metal, so it's going to take longer for it to get heat soaked. But it's definitely extracting heat from the Steam Deck itself because once we turn this over, you can definitely feel the heat coming off of that plate. Give me a quick baseline here. And we're in Celsius, so on the plate, 52.9 degrees Celsius, 53.1. That's getting pretty hot. Um, for us Americans, what I'm going to do is kind of swap over to Fahrenheit real quick, just to give us a good idea of how hot this thing's really getting. Give me a quick baseline over here on this side. 86, 87 degrees Fahrenheit. And on the plate... 128 degrees Fahrenheit. So yeah, this is getting hot. And if it was on my leg for a little while, it would definitely make me jump. So overall, love the look. It does get quite hot there where that plate is. And I kind of suspected this would happen. I mean, it's just trying to extract that heat out of the CPU straight to the back of that shell there. But I do think this would come in really handy for external cooling mods. I mean, if we had a small fan there on the back where that plate is, it could definitely keep it cooler for much longer. Or even using something like a thermoelectric cooler or a Peltier cooler. Recently, I did a video testing out a couple of them that I picked up on Amazon. And I'm pretty sure we'd get much better results with this shell versus the stock shell, given that we're right there at the edge with all of that heat. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, let me know in the comments below. But yeah, in the end, I think it looks great. It's got an awesome fit and finish. I mean, it went on here like stock. Just keep in mind, right there where that plate is, it does get quite toasty. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more, maybe pick one of these up. I will leave a couple links in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.